This might be a bit of a mistake, because Lantry's a powerful part in our party. But Sirin, I don't think having two less fighters would be a good idea. I really don't think so. So Sirin is going to come with us. And since you're now with me, it's not stealing if I take this. Oh, really? That's not very good loot. All right, let's have a look at you then, Sirin. Bane of Night. What? Not in combat. Stances. Deal arcane damage to nearby enemies. Deal raw damage to nearby enemies. Frightens nearby enemies. Drains health from nearby enemies. A song that terrorizes enemies with notes that conjure horrifying visions of the Bane. Oh, Sirin probably has a very different kind of magic. Aria of Force. Requires five breaths. Uh, Sirin releases a quick sonic blast that, that deals crush damage to enemies and forcibly pushes them away from her. And then the shattered stone. The Fate Binder rips a large chunk of stone from the earth and tosses it into the air. Sirin then unleashes a shattering note into the boulder, causing it to explode and send raining stones down from the sky, damaging enemies in the area. The power of Sirin's voice impacting the boulder causes a shockwave to follow the explosion, dazing enemies in a large area. Basically, you turn a rock into a grenade by shouting at it. My lord. Ah, uh, yeah, she's a bard, but extra dangerous. <laughs> that, that seems like a fair thing. I'm really glad that we've got Siri in our group. I wonder if it would even have been possible had we not sided with her. And she's got quite a tragic story, though, it seems. Uh, Siri seems to have been a tool all of her life and just wants to be... Cut loose. The problem is, I think she's probably got quite a lot of emotional baggage with that. And as 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 pitiful her story may be, she is dangerous. She is malicious. But it it's the sort of malice that is that comes from something that was done to her rather than because you know she just wants to be mean. But then that's possibly true of everyone. Who knows? Uh, I've got some points to spend. Um, well, before I do that, let's have a look at your abilities. So we got songs, peace, and war. Let's have a look. I want to find out about these before we do anything. Bringer of Death, a song ominously describing the power of Kairos' will as it washes over life and land, reaping those that stand against it. And it's wonderful how, as she's singing, the songs become, you know, it moves through an actual song. It reminds me of the Pillars of Eternity, um, the... the uh, well, my my character's class, I forget what it's called now, but how you used songs and you built the songs up over time to have different notes that created different effects. Um, Link is two seconds. So, uh, last of four, Link is a two. Uh, minus six resolve. Last of four, Link is a two. Minus ten dodge and parry. Last of four, Link is a two. Weaken for six seconds. Song on. Okay, that's fine. And then we've got Blood Brings the Dawn. A powerful battle chant Sirin was forced to sing for the Scarlet Chorus to inspire their victory. Bradley Oriet, plus 25 movement speed. Um, foe, armor stolen, fire, and then bleeding. Then Sword of Strength, Sword of Justice. A song of valor and defiance adopted by the Vendrian Guard to boost morale in their rebellion. Bradley Aura, plus 4 might, plus 4 wits, plus 6 vitality. Bane of Night, we've already seen that one, a song that terrorizes enemies with notes. Uh, we've also got... Uh, Red Runs Our Blood, an old song once proudly sung by the three cities of the four brothers. Since Kairos' destruction of the setting sun, the song is rarely sung. Friendly Aura, for Might, for last for three seconds. Uh, Foe Aura, minus eight armor. Friendly Aura, plus six resolve. Foe, minus eight armor. And then finally, Foe Aura, sundered for nine t turns. Hmm. And then, oh, so we unlock these based on our level, I guess. Like, uh, yeah, we don't spend on these. We just get them, I, I guess. Or maybe we, we gain the ability to, to unlock them over time. Because it does seem that we've got these right now. Um, then peace. Aria of Resolve. Sirin's Aria bolsters the party's resolve, extending the duration of their helpful effects and granting them increased dodge and parry. Disarming guys. Sirin's non-threatening appearance causes foes to underestimate her, granting her a large bonus of disengagement defense. Aria, Aria of Dissonance. Sirin's Aria increases the effect of the party's armor and causes foes to strike allies in melee to have their attack damage reduced for a time. And a languorous tempo. 
Siren slows her vocal progressions, reducing the speed of her songs and causing her stanzas to last longer while Langoria's tempo is active. Inspiration, Siren's presence inspires the party, increasing the experience gained for magic and subterfuge skills. Inspiration also grants Siren additional spell slot. Defensives cry. When combat begins, Siren reflexively cries out, protecting her and nearby allies by significantly increasing endurance, will, and magic defense. Aria of Respite. Siren sings notes that seep into the minds of her allies and draw them to lucidity, removes a hostile effect from each ally affected. I love this the idea of Siren. Uh, Mr. Bell, thank you very much for the Twitch Prime support. With careful restraint, Siren can safely control her voice over longer distances, increasing the range of Siren's defensive songs. And sustained breath at the end of combat, Siren can retain breath for several minutes. So if I move into combat, then she'll retain um, perhaps some point of, of her build-up. Guise of Innocence, while not wearing heavy armor, Siren is immune to engagement, so she can't be engaged. Wow. Aria of Winter, with a few whispered notes, Siren's voice unleashes a wave of icy winds that wash over enemies, leaving them frozen. Crystalline Control. Siren's control over her voice continues to improve, further increasing the range of Siren's defensive songs. Uh, increases the amount of breath retained. As long as Siren is not wearing heavy armor, Guys of Innocence will now grant her 50% crit critical deflection. Reviving Song. Siren's Aria of Respite now has the power to reach into the minds of allies that are completely unconscious and revive them. <laughs> she will sing you back to life. Ah, oh, Siren, you're amazing. And then Aria of Memories. Siren recalls a happy memory and begins to sing. The power in her voice creates an embodiment of the memory that will serve to protect her and the party by forcing nearby enemies to attack it. My lord. <laughs> Thank you, Cancer, for the bits there. All 69 of them. <laughs> ah, my, my. Uh, right, we have got Aria of Force as well. Siren releases a quick sonic blast that deals crush damage to enemies and forcibly pushes them away from her. Resonant field. Siren maintains a damage prevention field around herself. Any damage, even if prevented by resonant field, will briefly stop this field from regenerating. Okay. Um, Aria of Resonance. Siren's voice fractures the armor of her foes. Enemies in the area cannot defend against Siren's voice and have their armor sundered for a short time. That's in an accelerator vocal progression, increasing the speed of her songs and causing her to move through each stanza more quickly. Forced song. Siren learns to precisely channel her voice towards nearby enemies, gaining an accuracy bonus. And then resonant field just uh, increases. Uh, Aria of Pain. Siren focuses her voice and raises her pitch to deafening levels. Those caught in Siren's attack take arcane damage and are interrupted. Now that would be good. Quick breath. Siren automatically gains breath at the start of combat. Cry of despair. When Siren is defeated, her final breath unleashes a potent wave of vengeful emotion. All enemies nearby become weakened, dazed, and frightened. Aria of Confusion. Siren bombards her enemies with a cacophony. Uh, sorry, a cacophony of tormenting notes. Those that fail to resist her power are confused. Breath 2. Vengeful Pitch. Siren maintains a field of sound around her that retaliates against attackers. Melee attackers have their damage reduced for a short time. Aria of Storm, Siren's Aria generates lightning that strikes all foes near her and then chains to distant enemies. Those struck are knocked prone and dazed. And then finally, the Aria of Nightmares. Siren recalls a nightmare and begins to sing. The power in her voice creates an embodiment of her memory that will terrify and torment her foes. My lord, Siren is actually terrifying and awesome. I like her. Let's go for Resolve, because it's going to increase Affliction uh, duration. Let's get a point there. We'll get... I would like to reduce abilities and cooldowns a bit. Uh, let's not drop all of those points into it. Let's go for Spell Strength as well. Um, I don't like your very low health there, honestly. That's a little bit worrying. I could bring this up to 10, so you've got no no negative to your health, at least. Yeah, let's do that. Now, as for your levels, we are definitely going to get the Aria of Resolve. Um, I would like this one as well. I would like Aria of Force, Aria of Resonance. Um, and damage even to prevent, but yeah, we'll grab Resonant Field as well. Uh, 
Automatically gaining breath at the start of combat would be probably quite good. An interruption is super useful though, so we will pick that one up. Next is an experience game for magic. Now that one is particularly good. Yeah, I think we're going to pick this one up as well. There we are. Okay then, Sirin. Welcome to the party. Let's have a look at you. Do I have anything of use for you? I doubt it, but I'll have a quick and... Uh, no, I've only got heavy. Uh, I've got an Earthshaker hood. Is it better? No. Your headdress is amazing. I'm not even sure I can take that off. Songbird's uh, Bridal. A complex locking mechanism on the rear of this ornate helm keeps it fastened to Sirin's head. When the Archon of Song raises her voice, the gem at the brow flashes with crimson light, as if in warning. No matter how much you puzzle it out, you can't fathom how this gear was in assembled to fa or fastened in the first place, much less how to remove it. So basically, this warns people that Sirin is using her abilities. Must be quite frustrating for her. Quite frustrating. Oh, you can carry around someone's spine. Yeah. Um... You've got a discordant melody. Entertainer, plus 15 performance skill. Only Siren can equip this. Okay, fair enough. Uh, have a look at my weapons in here. Type, please. Got Staff of Boreal Forest. I don't think that we're going to beat the Entertainer bonus that we've got there. No, I very much doubt it. So we're going to leave Sirin with that for now. As for potions, I don't think I've got much I can give you. Potion of invisibility to get you out of a pinch. Um, maybe some potions to increase your armor as well if we need it. Don't need finesse on you. Resolve, maybe. Yeah, that'll that'll do for now. Okay then. That is going to be very interesting to have Siren in the group. Resonant Field. Shielded for 120 uh, damage. Can I set all of these up? Right. Currently, Harrier Force. Five breaths. Not in combat. Not in combat. Not in combat. Can I change this? Yes, I can. There we go. Red runs our blood. Raises might of nearby allies. Uh, raises might of nearby allies. Wits of nearby allies. Vitality. Those resolve nearby enemies, parry and dodge nearby, weakens nearby enemies. There's a movement speed of nearby allies, deals fire damage to nearby enemies, causes bleeding to nearby allies. There's arcane damage, raw damage, frightens nearby enemies, and drains health from nearby enemies. I think we'll go with Bane of Night. So we'll keep that one on for now. All right. On it. That is kind of awesome. I wasn't expecting to just pick up a new character here. That's fantastic. I definitely get a very strong Cassa vibe from uh, from Sirin there. Okay. Sing a song to remind your enemies about the embarrassing things they did when they were 12 years old. But someone, it still keeps them awake at night. Uh... Somehow. Okay, leave it. I, I was thinking of something a little bit more dangerous, but uh, sure, yeah, I guess we could go with that. Alright, let's have a look at the map. Let me zoom this in a bit. Is there a way to zoom that in at all? I don't think so, which is kind of annoying. Alright, let's pop in here. Hello? On the lookout. All right. I mean, you know, if no one's in here, sure. Yes, I will take all of those things. All right, Syrian, I want you to have the potions there. Actually, no. No, we're going to have to give it to... Kills and Shadow. We need them to have more stuff. Oh, that's a good point. Syrian, how many... Ah, only 49. Ah. We are now... We were just getting to the point with Lantry that Lantry could set up some really nice spells, but now we are back quite far. That is a shame. 
Oh, that's a crying shame. Uh, right, okay. Well, at least we've got this. Sirin, I need you to have a spell for healing people. There you go. At some point, I need to reorganize everyone's spells so they're in the a right, the a correct kind of order for me. Uh, Sigil of Vigor. Um, focus Intent, Channel Strength, and Aura. That is, there's no, no possible way. Uh, this is 40. No, I can't do much with that. Surge of Glory, though. I don't mind having that. We'll pop down Surge of Glory. Sure. We'll also take um, a different version of it. So, Titan's Touch. But we could make it last for longer. Uh, I don't think we need to, though. We can just re replace it. What's the cooldown? Yeah, we can just replace it later. We could even reduce the cooldown if we particularly wanted to. I don't think so. Um, intensity... Though we could pop that all the way up to 45. That's reasonable. Um, yeah, I think the intensity is the more important option there. So that's good enough. You're going to basically be here to buff us. It's going to be a chief concern of yours. Um, oh, out, just out of curiosity, guidance. Yeah, it's 80 though. Uh, sigil of Illusion, Sigil of Force, Sigil of Life. Let's go with Illusion. Got Specular Blur. Allied target. 30% Graze Deflection, 30% Hit Deflection. Masks the target in a blurred illusion, making them harder to hit. I do like it. False Pit. Unravel Mines. We could get Unravel Mines. So let's start with the buffing. Seren is going to spend a lot of time buffing us. Uh, let's see how high we can make this. 42% Graze Deflection and 42% Hit Deflection. We could give a bit of a greater range or even make it last a bit longer. Uh, we can't quite do that, actually. I could bring down the cooldown on it, but I don't think we need to. Let's just go with a stronger version. There we go. Next up, we want False Pit. Now, this one's obviously for dealing with enemies. Um, Prone Affliction for 4.1 seconds. I could make it stronger. Oh, hey, Marathi, how you doing, buddy? Thank you so much for the host there, mate. Very kind of you indeed. Can we get a shout-out for Marathi? Marathi is a very... A very wonderful gentleman that I've met several times now going to various such events. He's a fellow Scot. Well, I say fellow Scot, I'm Welsh. But I live in I live in Scotland. He's actually a Scot, is what I should say. He's a fellow who's living in the same place as me. He's a fellow person, person residing in Scotland. But he actually belongs here. Whereas I'm just kind of a visitor. But I'm, I'm, I'm a Celt, so it's fine. It's fine. As long as I'm not English, I, I think I get a pass. Uh, right, we need... Well, we can't make it any more potent than it currently is. We could push it a little bit further out, though. Mm, and that might be nice. Could we get a better air of effect? No. We could have a bit longer time on it, though. But only, only slightly. Still, five seconds of downtime is potent. So, sure, we'll grab that. There we go. Lurks below. Ah, how was that? Scott, Irish, Welsh, pretty much all mental and therefore acceptable. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Uh, how are you finding uh, Lurks below, mate? We are currently just setting up a couple of support spells for a new party member. And then Unravel Minds. We can, we can grab that one, sure. I can't do any more to it because of low law, honestly. I'm a little bit surprised that Syrian has such low lore. Maybe I can use Sigil of Force to help out a bit. And Concussive Blow. I mean, it'll keep people down for a bit. Tidal Burst. Yeah, we can't have Weighted Stance. Okay, we can have Concussive Bolt. And we can... I don't actually think we can do much. We can make it a little bit further out. So Dazed Affliction. I want to sign that there. 
And then we'll grab you for very little increase. But uh, AoE, Dazed Affliction. This is a pulse of concussive force, blasting enemies and pushing them back. Oh, that being said, how much does that add? Ah, oh, that's an extra 25. Yeah, no, no way we're getting that one. But there we go. Syrian is now properly set up with spells. All right, Dio. I uh, can't take that. That's fine. Interesting enough to be a fun distraction. No, oh, well, you know that's that's uh, all one can hope for. Press M to maximize the minimap combat log window. Oh, okay. I see. I should probably do that. I will stay out of sight. Thank you. Right. So we've got a couple of points of interest. Moonrise District, Forge Bound Merchant, The Forge. We've got Moonrise Falls, Sunset Spire. Got a couple of other interesting points. Okay. Do we have any other particular quests here though? Forge Master's Pride, Fire Inside, that's not something we need to do. Uh, the Weight of the Aegis, enlist the uh, aid of a Forge Bound, not subject to Kairos Law. And stirring Visions. I feel that bringing Barak back here would be a wise move at some point, but just not now. Later on we will get Barak Can't do that. and come back. So that ba we can hopefully get uh, Barak's armor taken off. If nothing else, I'd like to help him with that. I really would. The poor guy is having to poop himself in his armor. I, it behooves me to help him out of that particular predicament, regardless of anything else. Okay, we found something. Good, good. Found something. Hello, you, Sattler. Good riddance to those uptight uh, beast rutters. Okay. Uh, okay, so potion invisibility. That's not too bad. Back down on all fours, please. Uh, that is too... <laughs> wow. The things this game makes me say, legitimately, that when taken out of context... I think even perhaps taken in context. <laughs> Not exactly the most wholesome. Uh, right, we've got some more potions for you. There we go. Now everyone's got some sort of uh, healing. Right, where is this? Where does this go? I would like to go in and find out. Palal never took anything you said out of contact, Alec. Never! Ah. No one will know I was there. Good. Good. You know, because we're just going to tax these people. Taxing underway. And all of a sudden, I was there all along. No taxing has taken place. No, no. Fidra and Dea. Hello. Fidra, a bright-faced woman greets you as you approach. Welcome to Lethian's Crossing, Wanderer. My name is Fidra, and this is my beautiful wife, Dea. She indicates the stone-faced blonde woman standing next to her, who holds up her hand in a quick greeting. What brings you to town? Is there anything I can help you with? Uh, what can tell me about Lethian's Crossing? How do you feel about the disfavored? Well, let's go with Lethian's Crossing first. I've lived here most of my life, but honestly, I'm not sure there's much to say. <laughs> she looks contemplative. We're a center for trade and a waypoint for travelers. The walls are a little scary, but you get used to them over time. And she looks at Dea. What about you, dear? Dea shrugs, her expression never changing. What is it to say? The town is all right, but living under the thumb of an occupying force makes it hard to truly relax. Peter puts her hand on Dea's shoulder, and Dea sighs. Sorry, we couldn't be more help. Phaedra shrugs sheepishly. Um, you haven't always lived here? Uh, several years before Kairos' invasion, I moved away from Lethian's Crossing. Being the granddaughter of Lethian came with a responsibility I wasn't ready for. I met Dia in the Bastard City and decided to stay for a while. Oh, so that's where I probably spent some time. We were living in the Bastard City when we heard about Kairos' forces moving... To the tears, so we took that as our motivation to move. And I think we got out of there just at the right time. Yeah, just before I arrived, basically. We travelled a bit with a couple of caravans, but nothing really seemed like home until I returned to Lethian's Crossing. You never realise how much you can miss a place until you've been away for a while. She wraps her arms around Dyer and squeezes. <laughs> but I could live anywhere as long as this one was with me. Oh, It's true the trade hasn't been as vibrant here recently, but I'm sure it's simply a temporary setback. The merchants will sing and dance for you. Trying to convince you their supplier is, uh, supplies are unfettered, but everyone is feeling it. I have faith the world will set itself right soon enough. 
People call me a fool, but I don't see the benefit in bemoaning your fate. You take what life hands you, and you make it work. Well said. You're Lethian's granddaughter? One of many, I suspect. But I'm not only one... Uh, but I'm the only one anyone knows about. And before you ask, no, Eldian is not my father. Maybe you haven't heard, but my grandmother wasn't exactly the settling down type. Okay. How do you feel about the disfavored? I don't have an issue with them. Their curfew might be a bit strict, and it gets hard to keep track of every rule they invent and all the regulations they enhanced, enacted. Otherwise, they've left us alone to live our lives. Anything is better than having the Brotherhood. That exclaims, Give me a hundred rules for every Brotherhood member driven from this town. Oh, so the the um, the Brotherhood whose toll we got past. Anytime, Traveller, the address says happily. If you need anything else, just let me know. Oh, thank you. What about there? Hello, Traveller. Oh, okay. I feel a little bit bad about taking the gems now. But taxes are taxes. The loading times are a bit, uh, bit of a pain, I will confess. Right, now let's be on our way. More taxing. Uh, more taxing of things I can't carry. Much said. You didn't see nothing. I think I did. I saw everything. Svansson. Svansson attentively stacks pieces of iron carefully inside a crate. He notices you approach and dusts off his hands. A fate binder. Honored to be graced with your presence. The forge-bound merchant is faced away from the conversation and overhears your exchange and turns to you. If it isn't the fate binder of Toonod, welcome to Levian's Crossing. He motions to Svansson. Finish your work and then you can continue speaking with the fate binder. Svansson nods eagerly to get back to piling the iron. Oh, the wrath of the Forgebound. Beotus, once Vanson's back is turned, the merchant casts a worried look towards you. I don't wish to question your judgment. Okay, let's have a look. In Karis Conquest of the Tears, you chose to have this Forgebound's memory wiped completely, rather than risk him ever attempting to leave and join the ranks of the Scarlet Chorus, sharing the secret of iron forging with the masses. And I am grateful of the help, but it's just... The two of you observe the docile naivety of Svansson as he examines a piece of rat shit on the ground near the crate. It's just a little unsettling how a man can become a child again. I don't know what I'd do if I suddenly forgot everything that made me who I am. Yeah. Poor Svansson. Well. <laughs> oh dear. Can I talk to you again? Uh, what can I do for you? Are you forge bound? Sounds like scratching the top of his head from a moment. Uh, no, at least I don't think I am, though I feel I may have a kindred spirit for the craft. Uh, so what do you do? Uh, all kinds of things. Sometimes I haul iron, sometimes I run missives. I've been told this has always been my job, and I appreciate staying busy. Would you ever want to become a forgebound? I don't think I can. He stares off momentarily as if searching his own mind, but finds nothing. I don't entirely understand it, but they say I lost my memory in an accident a few years ago, and now I don't have whatever it is I would need to become one. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you don't know how you lost your memory? Swanson's expression darkens. No, I haven't pressed the question. I guess it doesn't really matter anymore. Okay. Well, faced with the consequence of our decision. Welcome, friend. The merchant cries out to you. His bell jingling with rings. His ways. Uh, he waves his arms about in a dramatic presentation of his ways. What brings you to my humble trading post? Have you seen something in mind or just browsing? Uh, show me what you got. Most well, certainly. Have a look. Okay. You got weapons. Uh, some armor. Uh, let's go fire. Core. I think I've already got this one, though. Have I, or have I not? Have I not? Really? Really, really? Huh. So did I go yet? It was better parrying, okay, that's not bad. Um really, really though? I mean it should have told me if I didn't have it, so sure I'll grab it and I'll grab that one too. Uh but yeah, I was under the impression I would have been given a notice about that. Um I don't have something I can sell 
Dirty missive. No, I'm not gonna sell these. Ink. So dirty metal bow. No. Uh, in terms of my weapons, I'm just gonna hold on to most of those. I don't feel the need to sell them. Ah, here we are. We already know this one. Yeah. So that can be sold. This can be sold. A lot of these items can be sold. To be perfectly honest, I just don't use them. If I'm using them, it's because something else has gone horribly, horribly wrong. I probably should use them. I, I, it would help a lot, more than likely. Uh, also, all these. How did that drop my money? Oh, no, no. I'm having to pay. All right, that's fine. Trade. Thank you. Yoink. Learn. Yoink. Learn. Well, there we go. We've got a couple of new spells now. Ha! Huh, glorious days. Let's have a look at these then. So, Fire Core. Channel arcane energy through the sigil of fire to summon intense heat or create the magical flame. First used centuries ago by the Sun Queen, Archon of Fire. The sigil unleashes devastating power in a skilled mage's hand. It doesn't cost anything to use. And we can have all sorts of things. Plus 80 law there. Expression used to create spells that uh, affect all targets. And let's have a look at the base spells. So, Searing Pain. Gather heated energy into your hands and release it into the foe. The target ignites in flame, burning over time. Mage fire affliction. So straight up mage fire. Whereas I can use this to add the frozen affliction as well. So yeah, this, this basically just lets me combine ice and fire. So just the fire one sets them on fire, but this one would also freeze them in place. Um, let's add that. I just want to... I don't know, I don't want to have a look at friction, I want to have a look at frozen. Movement speed reduced by 3, animation speed reduced by 70%, crush armor reduced by 5, causes burn damage over time. Honestly, I can probably get rid of some of my mage um, fiery spells. Uh, right, we've got fireball. Strike the target with a bolt of flame, da dealing fire damage to them and any nearby enemies. Okay. But I would probably need this to actually set them on fire. Yeah, this one doesn't actually set them on fire naturally. Interesting. Whereas this one would cause them to start burning. Okay. And then cone. Flash fire. Conjure a flash of flames that burns nearby enemies. Foes are interrupted and left burning. Now that would be good. Uh, sigil of influential domain. Expression used to create spells that affect all targets within a circular area. Arid lands. Channel energy to form a sweltering zone of sultry heat in an area. As long as enemies remain in the field, they are continually fatigued. Uh, recovery increased by 25%. Quickness reduced by 5%. That one's actually pretty good. And then finally, the Mantle of Flames. Creates a fiery aura around the target that damages foes and removes Frozen from allies. Hmm. Immunity to Frozen. I can't give this one... Uh, it only damages them. It doesn't actually give them any kind of uh, ongoing uh, burning effect, which is a bit of a shame. Healing Wisps is nice. Allied AoE plus two health release. Uh, you know what? I think this one's a particularly nice one to pop down. So I'm going to do, put that over healing wisps. In fact, I'm kind of feeling that I need to get rid of a lot of my um, basic spells. Yeah, let's uh, let's redesign these. So let's start from the beginning. I've got 80 to spend. Um, and I'm starting with 20. That would cost me way too much. That would cost me way too much. It's a shame, but oh well. Uh, create spells that can affect a distant target. Targets need to cast it. If I went with this, I could make a more powerful version. Um, every 24 seconds, I can heal for 27% health. Whereas I could put this down, increasing it to a lot higher, and cast it more often. Let's actually have a look at this one, though. Healing Wisps. Mm. Not sure on that one. Range is 2 meters. I can extend that out to 6 meters. Or even 4. 4 meters is honestly enough most of the time. 
If I pop that down and then this, it's now at 65. I can cast this every 18 seconds to restore 27% health. And if I can pop this down, uh, I can have Sigil of Strength. So I could increase it to 33% health every 18 seconds. If I get rid of that, I can add it up to 37. Eh, no, I think having it trigger more often is probably better. Probably much better, actually. Well, let's just have a quick look. If I gave this one more of an AoE. And then greater strength. No. That's a shame, because that would actually make it reasonably good. Plus 3% uh, health, but it would have a long cooldown. Very long cooldown. No, we'll just make a... um. A simple healing spell that I can cast pretty regularly. There we are. Sign that in. Restoring touch. So there we go. That's my healing spell. I'm not going to have any other healing spell. Now, do I want something that would benefit my allies? Uh, I kind of do, honestly. Um, I could have guidance and just use this. Uh, the cooldown is 2 minutes, but for 30 seconds, everyone will get plus 10 hit precision and plus 20% graze precision. Um, create an aura around the target that inspires valor. It, it, allies near the aura receive a bonus to graze and hit precision. Pulse rate is every 3 seconds. So for, for, thir for half a minute, we'd have a pretty solid... Thing going on, but I'd only be for a quarter of the time, for a quarter of its cooldown length, I'd be able to use this to give those near me an ability to keep fighting quite well, which you know isn't terrible. But if I went with a cone instead, I could have Surge of Glory, 30% damage, and plus two resolve. I'm going to be able to endure physical and mental damage. I mean, you know, that's quite a neat, decent one. Radius is quite large. I could increase it. I could increase the cone, rather. Uh, I could increase the radius quite a lot. Move that up to 60. Uh, can I pull this down to almost... I can almost cast this constantly at that point. Or I can just push for a stronger effect. There we go. Six meter radius. You'll gain an extra 2.8 resolve, but I've got a bit of time on that. Can I increase that? Yeah, actually 32 seconds. So I'd only be down for 12 seconds. I'd be just under half the cooldown. I could keep this running. That's not bad. Alternatively, I could increase the length of time. So it's di different ways of approaching the same problem. Well, the thing is, Syrian can keep that one going. Easily enough. Uh, yeah, given that, we are going to go with the aura. And we're just going to go with a, with a blank aura. Very bland spell, but uh, should help. Hey, the world's address. It goes really well, thank you. And uh, Nightly Prophet, thank you very much for dropping by. Time to chill. I'm glad. Uh, the I'm redesigning the entire um, spell slot, Marathi. I did just replace uh, a non-healing spell with a healing spell, but I'm going to be rebuilding all of the spells because I've got a lot more lore recently. So I think that it's probably worth me just spending a bit of time setting this up. Um... Specular Blur. Now, we set up something interesting down there. I don't want to create Unravel Minds, really. I would like Specular Blur. I would like to be able to give someone a good bit of uh, increase of action. I don't need to increase the cooldown. That's just one thing I don't need to do at all. Give them a massive increase to this. Um... Much better range. And I guess I could push up the time that it'll last for. So Specular Blur on my two fighters would be great. 
between between Sirin and Avak, I could keep my fighters with a good bit of uh, deflection going on. Uh, when a character is attacked and the hit result has been determined, the target deflection percentage is checked. Deflection can reduce an attack by one hit result. E.g. a graze can be converted to a miss. Uh, deflection is a property of equipable clothing. So basically, if someone hits them, then they'll have a 42% chance of turning that into a graze. And I assume it doesn't then check the graze percentage, because that would be silly. It would be super OP. It would be a massive cascade. Um... But that, that will do. I think I'll have both of you able to do something along those lines. Now, Avak is more of a fighter. So, let's start having a look at all of these wonderful things. Um, Sirin has got False Pit and Unravel Minds, and they are good for spells. Uh, and I would like to pop at least one more for Avak. So, it's either going to be False Pit. Prone Affliction is pretty good. Conjure the illusion of an endless black pit below the target, convincing them that they are falling to their death. The enemy is left prone until they can make a sense, uh, make sense of the illusion. And that's for 2.1 seconds on, AO, uh, on foes nearby, and 4 seconds on the person afflicted by it, or unravel minds, which dazed or stunned. Dazed reduces uh, income and recovery, parry and dodge reduced by 30, stunned targets cannot move or attack. Now, stunned is amazing. Um... Is really good. If we increase its power, I don't actually care about the strength. I'm going for the effect. That's all I care about here. So increasing that up to 2.9 seconds and 17.3 is worth it. And reducing my cooldown would be worth it. It's 28 seconds. I can just keep unraveling mines as often as I can. That seems fair. I'm not going to go for False Pit, I don't think. I will just have a quick look at what I can do with that, but I doubt it. Now, this one is going to do damage. I could increase the time they're down for. Uh, up to five seconds is quite good. Reduce the cooldown of the spell is decent. I could increase the air of effect. I mean, you know, if I had a bit more strength, I could anyway. Um... I could reach out a little bit further. I could increase the strength of it. it the, the damage I don't care about. Again, this spell isn't there to cause damage. It's there to disable my opponents. Now, I think the daze is a little bit more potent. Uh, I'd rather have that than have um, False Pit. False Pit is something Syrian can do. So I'm going to leave that to Syrian. Now then... Time for us to have a look at my damaging spells. I've got three damaging spells. I've got Fire, Lightning, and Frost. I've also got Force, which maybe I'll have a look at Force first. So this one, Concussive Bolt. Bombard the distant target with Concussive Forces. The force of the impact can daze and interrupt. Having interrupts are pretty good. Um, uh, tidal Burst. Release a pulse of Concussive Force, blasting enemies and pushing them back. So that would get them out of the way and the aura weighted stance generates an aura around the target to prevent allies from being knocked prone i mean that would be actually quite good but it's a long cooldown all of these look like they're going to be super long cooldowns actually so i might go with dazed uh, well, actually, from behind, I could po possibly push people away from my allies, which may be useful, but uh, I actually want something that does a bit of damage, so that concussive force would be quite nice. We can do a little bit more damage as well. It's got an AoE, so I can also increase that AoE. Um, radius 2 meters, so I'll just clonk them. They'll get dazed and also interrupt. Um, this doesn't affect the actual interrupt so it doesn't matter to me i could go with rooted oh yeah of course I, ah of course yes i've got tidal burst there which which causes rooted um that is a really good point if i were to add rooted to this it would be a little bit too um costly but i could root them with this for 12 seconds they'll be rooted in place 
and I can cast this at, at range. Uh, where is the range? Eight meters. Might be nice. And it'll root everyone nearby, and then I can just pull out, but... Blah. I don't know, there's something about pushing them away and then rooting them that, that appeals to me quite a lot. So, Sigil of Rooting there, we're basically recreating this, this spell. Um, 135 meter count. I don't care for that one, but let's increase its range. Here we go, 5.6 meter range. I'll push them back for 4 meters and then root them for 12 seconds. Now, I would like to reduce the cooldown or increase the length, but uh, that's not going to happen anytime soon. That would bring it down by a whole 10 seconds, but this is good enough. So there we go. We've got Unravel Minds. There we are. So that's our fourth spell. Now, first up, we're going to go with Fire. And oh, we've got lots of options here. This already makes it more costly than I can possibly do. So uh, we're not going to be even looking at that. Mantle of Flames. Immune to Frozen. Knitting for... 30 seconds, a radius of 2 meters. Again, 2 minute cooldown though. I kind of like the idea of a... of a, a sweep. Area of effect, 38 seconds. It's got... radius of 4, 120 degree cone. Getting to burn for 6 seconds is pretty, pretty awful. I could get that up to 8.7 seconds. Um, don't really care for that. I could push this all the way out to 5.6 meters. But I'm thinking getting a higher damage on a spell like this. I think that would be more useful. Oh, wow. The Sigil of Frostfire really increases the length of time that these things are down for. Let's turn that off for a second. 8.2. I mean, Mage Fire is just so potent. Super potent. But if we have a look at Fireball, that does more damage straight up. We could add this in, and now it does Frost and Fire damage. So it means that their ability to deflect it is going to be down. Because they may be high frost resistance, but low fire, and vice versa. As an uh, uh, AoE of 2 meters. Could I increase that? Yes, I could, to 3 meters. It's reasonable. 38 second cooldown, mind you. And 8.2 seconds burns. That's reasonable, but let's see what we can do with strength. I could take it up to a lot more damage. Quite a lot of damage to the direct enemy, but oh wow, look at that. Can't quite get there yet, but I think we're going to go with this fireball. Pop that one over there. Right, now we want a frost-based attack. Um... Oh, sorry, a charge based attack. Charge fist. Strong interrupt. Stunned. I mean, I'm really big on the stuns. Um, Bomination. Four seconds, they take 50% extra shock damage. Uh, no, let's go with uh, Electric Jolt. We'll, we'll stack up the stuns if we can. How much longer? 1.4 seconds. It's not as much of a, an improvement. How long does this take? Oh, it takes a long, long time to use that. But I could drop it down a fair bit. Or I can just go for lots of damage. Yeah, I, I think going for this would be quite nice. I'm assuming stunned is going to, in effect cause them to be interrupted anyway. So we'll go with that. And then finally, our Frost. Now, yeah, Frost straight away can't do that. But let's get a, a range there. Now we can't afford you. Could get you. Could still, we could reduce the the time it takes to do it. I do like the idea of just setting people on fire with ice, though. 
It's so, so, so beautiful. So intensely beautiful. Increasing the area of effect we can't afford to do. Land tree probably could, but... Uh, Icicle Storm. We'll have... Uh, flaming Icicle Storm. Because I just gotta... There we go. So that's a full new set of abilities for Avac there. That's decent. Now, what's the cheapest healing spell I can make? 35. That is not bad. Because even you could have it. So yes, let's get that going for you as well. Uh, no, don't override it. What's this one? I've got a better cooldown on this one. Could I exchange that better cooldown for higher... Almost. Um, greater range. No, can't. So close. So very, very close. We'll just leave it as. And you've got Concussive Bolt. Can I get you to be able to drop people in a pit? Or even set people on fire? I might be able to get you to set people on fire. A fire spell is amazing. And you're my frontline fighter. If I can get... If I can set someone on fire... It stops them from doing anything because they're panicking for a little while. So, yeah, that is better than that ability there. Absolutely. Uh, it's also probably worth me giving to Verse for obvious reasons. I can't get that one. I can have a bit of a better range. Sure, Verse can have it as well. Oh, damn it. Uh, I want that one to have better range. Ah, damn. Okay. I'm going to have to make it again, unfortunately. There we go. First, you get that one. And what else did I want to give first? I mean, currently you've got Frozen Grasp. Is that worth having? Frozen Affliction? Not really. Um... We can go with False Pit, probably. Or actually Unravel Minds, perhaps, even. Uh, Dazed and Stunt. Yeah, we might as well. I think that's reasonable. And already puts it up. Uh, we're not going to get a cheaper one than that. So, there we go. A new setup of spells. Well, well worth it, in my humblest of humble opinions. There we go. Why are you telling me that I've got more stuff to do? Oh. Ah, uh, material force spells to damage foes in a line. What? What could go with that? Uh, that one can't have it. Nope. 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 And, alright. I have no idea what kind of spell would use that. Cause material force spells. Material force. Hmm. I've no idea. I don't think we've got a spell of that that like. Okay. I think we are suitably set up with yes. brand new spells that I'm extremely happy with. Super happy with that. I know it takes a long time to set up those spells, but damn it, it's cool though. So I don't really care. Uh, what have we got over here? I don't know where this goes. Possibly just upstairs, up to the top. We've also got some stuff going on there at the spire. 